protecting our state. It's about dividing America from our nation's capital. Mr. Homan, what do you make of the governor of the great state of California and their freshman senator? Well, I watched the press conference yesterday. The governor is just plain wrong when he says that ICE has access to the jails. They're not releasing criminal aliens to the street. You know, let, let, let me, last night, the California Sheriff's Association, his own sheriffs released a statement last night. I want to read one sentence from that statement. This is from the California sheriffs. We oppose SB 54. The bills and act is still containing significant liabilities, which include restricting our communications with federal law enforcement about the release of wanted, undocumented criminals from our jail, including gang members and other serious offenders. Mm -hmm. His own sheriffs are agreeing with what ICE and DOJ are saying. Right, and, and uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions said that the mayor of Oakland was endangering the lives of agents, um, and I assume some of these sheriffs as well. What do you say? Absolutely. I mean, she let the criminal aliens that we had targeted for arrest, gave them an advance notice that law enforcement was coming for them, and, and many criminal aliens were not apprehended because of that warning. I mean, I can't put a specific, specific mm -hmm. number on it, but a lot of criminal aliens were not found because they were given advance warning by the mayor, which, which, which increased a public safety issue in our area. We have criminal aliens walking around that community that are now in hiding because of her warning. And Tom, here's something else. I imagine it's a, when you become a sanctuary state, you become a magnet. So your job gets harder in a state that doesn't want you there, or at least the governor and some people in the apparatus don't want you there. Absolutely. When, when you call yourself a sanctuary city, you're dangling that carrot, which is going to cause more illegal immigration. Uh, they're going to see more illegal immigration in the state of California. And, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just an enforcement issue. More people are going to die trying to come into this country because they think they can get to a state or a city where they're going to be shielded from immigration enforcement. It's just it's wrong on many different levels. Well, the senator from California also called out your agency. Listen to what she said about what ICE does and what they're doing understand us are facts. 89% of everybody we arrested last fiscal year, that's 9 out of every 10 aliens we arrested, did have a criminal history. When we look at California specifically, the last operation in Los Angeles, 88% of those were criminal aliens. You know, I've tried to meet with Kamala Harris and Diane Feinstein three separate occasions in the past two months to explain to them the facts mm -hmm. of what ICE is doing. They've canceled every one of those meetings. They don't want to know the facts. They want to keep playing this political game, put smoke and mirrors up about what ICE is actually doing. She's well, wrong. Uh, Governor, uh, uh, Jerry Brown said yesterday, this is basically going to war against the state of California. Is the federal government, Tom, going to war with California? No, we're not going to war with California. I've gotten so, numerous emails from the citizens of California thanking ICE for what we're doing. Look, we, we are enforcing immigration laws. Kamala Harris or the governor is not asking the FBI or DEA or any other law enforcement agency to ignore the laws they're supposed to enforce. We are prioritizing the enforcement of our laws. But let's make something clear. There's no prerequisite that an alien has to commit yet another crime when they right. get to the United States to, to, to be, have the law enforced upon them. I mean, yeah. we enforce immigration law. That is our job. That is our sworn oath. And we're going to do it without apology. Mr. Right, Holman, can I ask you a quick question? How did this sanctuary city business start? I mean, who thought it was a good idea? Okay, we're going to enforce that law, but we're not going to enforce this law. You know, I don't know how it started. They obviously weren't talking to, you know, uh, the victims of illegal alien crime. They ought to talk to a few of the parents who lost their children to illegal alien, uh, criminal aliens. Uh, they ought to be talking to law enforcement. You know, law enforcement across the ranks. I mean, the, the street officers, they don't support the sanctuary uh, 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 legislation. I just read a statement from the California Sheriff's Association that were against this uh, bill, and they tried to get this uh, to convince the governor not to sign it. He still signed it. So look, the sanctuary cities, bottom line, you can't argue this. It's a public safety threat. It's an officer safety threat. And I've asked the OJ to review what's going on in California. They reviewed it and they decided to sue. And I think it's the right thing to do. Director Hunt, I just want to make one thing clear. So I think there is a, an effort on the part of, of the governor, of Kamala Harris, um, to conflate, to say, you guys are out there arresting a guy in a restaurant or a grandma. Um, can you talk to us specifically about any cases that you know of that these are actual violent or criminals or felons? Yes, you know, actually, I, got, I have a list in my hand of the people we arrested during the latest operation. Let me just read a few of the people we arrested in the latest operation. It's aliens with numerous criminal convictions for aggravated assault with deadly weapons, 
uh, murder, lewd and lascivious acts with a, with a child under 14, wow. uh, child molestation, cruelty against wives, cruelty against child, numerous burglaries, numerous batteries. These are people that are a public safety threat. These are the people we targeted during this operation that we took in off the streets. I would think the, the Oakland mayor and, and the congressional representatives mm -hmm. in California would send me a letter thanking me for removing public safety threats. I don't out think of their the communities. citizens know that that's, the, I, I don't think enough citizens in California know that that list exists. I mean, that needs to get out there. Mr. Hummer, you were talking, uh, I think, a week or two ago after the mayor of Oakland essentially warned the illegals, uh, the criminal element, that uh, there might be some raids, that you were considering obstruction of justice charges or some sort of charge against the mayor. What's the status of that right now? Uh, DOJ is reviewing that. I do not know the status of it. But one thing I want to make clear for these congressional representatives and the governor and the mayor who says, I should be focusing on the criminal aliens. In fact, we are, like I said, nine out of every 10 arrests last year in California were criminals. But if they're serious about wanting ICE to focus on criminal aliens, then let me back in the jail. Kill SB 54, let us work with those sheriffs, let us get our hands on these criminals before they're released back in the community to reoffend against the very immigrant communities they live in. Yeah. So if they're serious about that, they can certainly help me. There's a difference between the people running California and the people who live in California. I think a lot more support you. Uh, than, than one would believe if you listened to the governor yesterday. I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, and you have a child sexual um, assault uh, criminals in the, in the home of the start of the Me Too movement. Um, you'd think that these uh, politicians might want to at least get that guy. Tom Holman, thank you. You're welcome. you got a tough job, just saying. And California is not making it easy, it's not easier. Easy. Hey, Pardon. Jillian, you have a tough job. You're up hosting the 5 o'clock show, and then you have to deal with us for three Life hours. Life is so tough, let yeah. me tell you. It tough is like, tough. my goodness. And then you got to do the shoveling I, right after. Yes, shovel all that snow out there. It's right. tough. Um, all right, though, seriously, we do want to give you an update on a story that we've been following out of Colorado. A local sheriff ignoring a federal request to hold an illegal immigrant accused in a deadly hit and run. Ivan Castaneda allegedly leaving the scene after slamming into a semi truck last week in Denver. The driver of the truck died in the fiery crash, but the sheriff's department says they won't release the Mexican citizen to ICE without a warrant. Denver is a sanctuary city. Now, if he posts bail, he would be free until his next court date. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders calling out a reporter for not doing his homework. A CBS journalist put in his place after asking about open White House positions. Listen. Could you tell us who has come in this week? Uh, we've made several personnel announcements. I'd refer you back to the press releases of uh, nominations and personnel announcements that have gone out. Uh, I think there's been at least three that have gone out earlier this week. In the White House. I'd be happy to forward those uh, to you if you're not receiving the White House press releases. <laughs> Uh, Reed didn't ask any more questions after Sanders' offer. How about this? A Walmart employee is now a viral patriotic singing sensation. Well, that is Sabrina Barnes wowing shoppers with her performance of the national anthem soon after her son left for basic training. She joined us earlier with what the newfound fame means to her family. I'm able to write my son and tell him not only does he inspire me, but he inspires so many other people. And, you know, it's... it's really predicted it. <laughs> joins us right now with the cleanup. Well, I have to tell you, there was quite a spread between three inches in Central Park and then 16 miles to the west where they got close to three feet of snow. That's really hard to really predict where those heaviest of bands are going to set up. So here are your current temperatures. That snow is not going to go anywhere because it's cold outside. And then we have the potential for a new storm system uh, to move in this weekend. So here's the remnants of our nor'easter, still getting a lot of snow for northern New England. Parts of Maine could receive upwards of two feet. And then our future radar shows the potential for a little bit of snow on the backside, especially across the Great Lakes. But we are watching two computer models right now as we get into Sunday and Monday. There's the GFS and there's the Euro. And the GFS, the American model, brings it close enough to be a little bit concerned. The Euro has this offshore, which is what we want as we head into the weekend. But we we have to obviously watch both of them. Also want to do a quick reminder that not only do we have the potential for a third nor'easter, but we also have to spring ahead on Sunday. Wah, wah, wah. Back to you. Well, it's just 12 or 13 days till spring. Yay! Hang on. There's All a right. silver lining. Thank yeah. you, JD. We lose an hour, Thanks, but we Janet. get light. And no longer you're going to realize how soon we're going to be there and our speedos on the beach.
Okay. Thank you. <laughs> try to try to un unsee that image. Uh, and as the Northeast <laughs> things <laughs> out before we go to the summer uh, from the monster storm, airlines are working to get back on track. They canceled thousands of flights in anticipation of this hit. One place hard hit is Newark Airport, and that's where correspondent Lauren Blanchard is. Lauren, New Jersey got a lot more snow than uh, New York City just across the river. Yeah, it certainly did. Good morning, Steve, Brian, Rachel. The airport trying to get back on schedule today. Newark Liberty was the most impacted yesterday. Today, it's Boston. Around the U.S. today, more than 400 flights have already been canceled. Yesterday, 2,700 were scrapped. Thousands were delayed, leaving travelers stuck. And in Lemonster, Massachusetts, it was still snowing this morning. The winter storm buried some places in the northeast in more than two feet of snow, and hundreds of accidents were reported reported yesterday and officials are asking people to be careful today as crews are trying to continue to clear the roads. We'll be here all night till it's clear and then we're going to go out on the sidewalks. So we'll be doing this till tomorrow afternoon. Plus, the storm knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of people. Officials warning the repairs may take longer than usual because they're still trying to catch up from the last storm. And airports are telling people today if they are trying to catch a flight to check ahead with the airlines and check the flight status to make sure their, uh, their plans are still going to be going uh, before they head out to the airport. Steve, Brian, Rachel. That's, That's right. very good advice. By the way, she said you can't put your speed on yet. Not yet, but I will say this. <laughs> Uh, Thank uh, you, Newark. Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. Newark was amazing. Uh, the getting us out a week ago. Uh, much more efficient airport. than LaGuardia. Yeah. 11 minutes now before the top of the hour. Just ahead. An artist captured the NFL national anthem protest in a painting. He joins us live to explain how this picture is really worth a thousand words. But first, let's check in with Sandra Smith for a preview of what happens on the channel exactly 10 minutes from right now. Hey, guys, and a special hello to Rachel there Hi. on the couch this morning. Well, we've got a big show come up, coming up. Kelly and Conway will join us at the top of the hour on those proposed tariffs. And morale at the White House. How are things going inside the West Wing these days amid recent departures? We're going to ask her. And ending six years of litigation, six years, the Department of Justice will finally turn over those fast and furious documents. What will they reveal? Congressman Daryl Issa, who led that investigation, joins us live. That and lots more coming up. America's Newsroom begins in about nine minutes. See you then. You know, some say a picture is worth a thousand words, and one artist is using his painting to make a statement on the controversial NFL anthem protest, the kneeling. The painting depicts President Trump standing on a football field holding a tattered American flag. Joining us right now is the guy who painted it, the artist behind the painting, which is titled Respect the Flag, John McNaughton. John, uh, good morning, and thanks for joining us today from Salt Lake City. Good morning. City. Thank you. So in that picture, you can see the president of the United States. Uh, he's holding a flag, but he's also holding like a wash rag, a, a light blue wash rag. What's he doing and, and what's your message? Well, I imagined uh, President Trump standing on the field and he sees this tattered, uh, trampled flag and he's grabbed this rag and he's wiping the mud off. You know, and it represents uh, what happened this last football season with the NFL when uh, the uh, NFL allowed the players to protest, you know, by not uh, standing to the national anthem. What moved you to the so, point that you used your talents for this? Well, you know, I'm the kind of artist that I try to think of imagery that reflects how I feel about different topics. And like millions of other Americans, I was offended by, you know, what happened this last football season. And, and uh, I didn't watch the Super Bowl and the mm -hmm. other things because it really bothered me. And so I wanted to paint an image that uh, would reflect what happened there and also the way President Trump uh, stood up for American values when he uh, interjected himself into this. Now you're no stranger to controversy. You have other paintings. Tell us about them. Oh, I, uh, I've been doing different political pictures since uh, 2009. Uh, I did a picture called The Forgotten Man back in 2011, uh, which was my reaction to Obamacare when that passed. And in that particular picture, you have Obama standing on the Constitution while the other presidents are saying, you know, what have you done? And The Forgotten Man is sitting on the bench who represents every American. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, John, got a question for you. The reaction, yeah. what, what sort of reaction did you get 
to the Donald Trump washes the flag painting? <laughs> you know, it's always the same reaction. Uh, at first, those on the left get really angry, and it's all over the internet. Uh, they can't believe that an artist would take the time to paint something like this. Yeah. But then everybody else sees the painting and they identify with sure. it and sure. it takes off, yeah. Oh, right. Certainly representing a lot of Americans in that point of view and in that painting. Yeah. Thank you, sir, yeah. for joining us live today from Salt Lake City. Thank you. All right. On planned tariffs at a ceremony today at the White House, this is going to go forward.